next meeting? Sounds like we are. <clears throat> um, call this meeting to order at 7.02. January 26, 2022, Norwalk Historical Commission meeting via Zoom. And um, there was a lot of meetings to read, uh, minutes to read. And I couldn't find 1222. I don't know where they went. Um, did anyone look at the minutes for these? September, October, um, oh, two in November. <laughs> it almost seems like we should send these in separately because it's so complicated. Anyone see anything to change? I saw a few things. So I think um, I'll send those to you, Laura. That'd be great. Yeah, send over okay. any um, minutes you have and edits, and then um, I can post them to the website if, right. um, if you think they're done. Okay. Because lots of little, I think there's some autocorrect going on and names misunderstood, et cetera. Um, okay. So anyone here for public participation? I don't see anyone. So I'll say no. Um, next are reports from boards. Diane Jallaret, did I see? Oh, there you are. Wait, where's Diane? <laughs> Diane? I'm not there. Okay. So I'm going to skip to, well, Patsy here and uh, Susan. Yeah, I so. thought Doug Hempstead was going to try to join because he, uh, as of December, is our new chairman at Blackbird Matthews Mansion Museum. Right. Um, and so I'm surprised he's not because we talked about it today and I sent mm -hmm. him the link. Anyway, uh, um, I, I am uh, obviously staying on and being very involved with the mansion, but <clears throat> I thought it was time that um, we got some new people working there. Uh, I will be overseeing, uh, uh, continue to oversee the building project. And that's what I want to report on. And then Susie can do her usual, uh, <clears throat> the regular uh, information. We have been stymied. I had mentioned that over the last couple of months that we had um, uh, had preliminary bids <clears throat> and we came in far exceeding the money that we have uh, already bonded. And that's seven and a half million, five from the state, two and a half from the city. Uh, we haven't drawn any money from the city yet. We've been just expending uh, state money, which is uh, for, for design and uh, uh, consultants. <clears throat> and uh, so, um, uh, David Westmoreland and I talked about uh, how we we're going to deal with this. And um, in your budget, we have asked for $6 million um, to continue the project. It, it's a very sophisticated um, construction job. It's not typical at all. And um, the mansion presents a challenge, a major challenge in that uh, there are no studs in the building. So in order to do mechanicals, putting any wiring in or any tubing for the fire suppression system uh, and additional lighting, because there's no heat and lights on the second and third floor and not much of the basement. It's hard to believe because the first floor looks so fabulous, but um, there's nothing there. So um, we did present um, to the planning and zoning uh, last week, last Thursday, David and I, and we are uh, in discussions with the city uh, on that. And um, I thought it might be a nice idea for next your next month meeting that we, um, we suggest that our architect, David Scott Parker Associates, uh, do a uh, 10 to 12 minute um, um, 
um, PowerPoint uh, about the significance and the importance of the mansion. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand the depth of the story that is that can be told. It is being told there. Uh, so that that is something I thought. I don't know if you can work it into. Your Pardon? Someone's. I think someone's mic is on. Oh. Um, yeah. So. Anyway, I, I thought it would be of interest to you folks. Um, uh, we had the version of that at our gala last uh, uh, October. Uh, and we've, uh, David, Scott Park and I have worked on re reducing it and having it available for presentations to movies, uh, to meetings when we ever get a chance to get back to having uh, meetings in person. And also as a tool for us to help to raise additional um, funding. So um, it's an idea I'm throwing out. I hope you like it. If you, if it doesn't work in because you have a busy schedule, we could try to do it in March. But I thought with the budget process coming up, this would be helpful for you to have this uh, presentation. Um. We could probably work it out. I mean, I guess I I was at the October the right. gala, and um, yeah. it, it might also be kind of preachy to the choir. So I don't know to <laughs> how we can reach, but we do need to reach the wa wider audience or part of city hall audience as well yeah. as fundraising. Yeah. So, but you know, we're under your your auspices. So obviously, uh, the more you know about our mansion when the meetings come up and our programs uh, and the, the importance that it has for our city, the better. Um, so uh, it, it, uh, you were there, I know, Dana. Uh, this is really, really, really reduced in, in time to uh, 10 to 12 minutes. I think that should work out good. Okay. So that, unless somebody has a question on the building, it's uh, Susie can take over. Okay, thanks, Patsy. All right, hello everyone and happy new year. As you know, we're usually closed to the public due to lack of electricity and heat on the second floor and in the servants' quarters and other areas of the museum. Uh, that's why the project that Patsy's been working so hard on is so important um, to, to, be, to be realized. In any case, um, as you know, we had Netflix and we're closing out the project in the next couple of weeks. They have given us the money to make some repairs uh, to the window frames uh, that, that will be done in the spring that were uh, slightly damaged during the, the movie making. And also the signs in the park, uh, which also were damaged during the filming, uh, they will be installed, we hear, uh, in about two to three weeks. Uh, we have received a very generous grant from Connecticut Humanities for $33,600 in support of the museum operations and to expand community access by offering free and low cost admission to the underserved. Uh, we're planning two uh, great uh, exhibitions. One will be a fashion exhibition um, that will be uh, curated by uh, Lynn Bassett, who is a renowned textile expert. Um, and uh, we also have, and that this, this exhibition will be about uh, fashion, sustainable fashion in, during the 19th century. Uh, it will also address local textile industries and the use of also uh, poisons uh, and other controversial items such as feathers uh, throughout the US uh, during the production of, of uh, 
fashion garments, popular fashion garments. Another exhibition will be a contemporary exhibition in the billiards room. We're working on a juried uh, uh, contemporary impressionist exhibition. And we have had a lot of entries throughout Connecticut. And also we've uh, received entries from New York City, from Brooklyn and uh, artists from really throughout the tri-state area. So it's going to be uh, a very exciting exhibition. Uh, the Young Writers competition this year is about breaking barriers. Uh, it's an exploration on the people, places and events that represent pivotal firsts in the 19th and early 20th century, but also we're bringing it up to contemporary living and to see if students are inspired but by anybody in particular that they have met or read about uh, that they believe has broken a barrier of some sort and has been uh, an inspiring force in the community. Um, Finally, we, are, uh, we have applied for a grant called Museum Makeover Grant. Uh, it's launched by the Connecticut League of History Organizations. And it's uh, basically a period room reassessment where uh, a group of curators were, is going to come to the mansion to look at our uh, period rooms and reassess whether it needs uh, some kind of... Uh, updating uh, to meet uh, uh, the uh, current um, visitors experience uh, expectations. Um, do you have any questions for me? Sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> um, just a note, Laura or Dana, uh, it looks like Diane is waiting to get in. Oh, okay. I, I saw in the chat. Uh. Uh, Thanks. Um, I think the way for her to get in is to have her promoted, but I, both Dana and I don't have the um, capacity to do that because we're not hosts of the meeting. So we need the um, host, which is someone from IT who's listening to let her in. Um, and so I'm trying to get in touch with them via email because um, they are in the meeting, but I don't know if they're listening. Uh, they just promoted her, the ah. panelist. Thank you. <laughs> Diane, I think you're I'm on. You're I'm on now. She's yep, they, yes, they, someone was listening. <laughs> someone was yes. reading. Thanks, yeah. Jordan. <laughs> yes. Yes, and I saw the message come up. <laughs> yes, I was hanging out, waiting for someone to look. <laughs> um, so uh, yes, we've been uh, very busy um, in the last couple of months. And um, I also want to share that uh, we received uh, two grants um, since December. One is a SHARP grant uh, where we're going to actually uh, put our exhibits online virtually. So we can move forward with that. We're really excited. Um, so that was a $10,000 grant. And then we also received, um, uh, like the mansion, the uh, cultural uh, operating support grant, and it was for $12,100. Uh, so we're excited to have received two grants um, in the last two months. Um, and just want to let you know that um, opening our the new exhibit uh, our timeline exhibit from 13,000 BC to 1835 uh, has been very well received. Um, so if you have not seen it, um, it will be up for a very long time. Uh, please um, just let me know if you want a special um, uh, a special look at it. Um, and I've had quite a few people who have, uh, have wanted to see it. Uh, and usually we're closed at Mill Hill during the, the winter, but as long as it's not stone snowing, um, you can take a look at it. Uh, we've actually had several um, uh, virtual lectures and we actually had one in person before we all had to do, do a lockdown. Uh, so we had uh, an archeology span 
uh, in-person lecture in December uh, with Professor Ernie Wiegens. Most, a lot of people might be familiar with him. He's a professor at Norwalk Community College. Um, that went very well. And then we've had uh, uh, one on the food waste um, in Native America. Uh, and then we also um, uh, had one last Thursday on coastal Connecticut uh, with Patrick Lynch. And he is um, one of the, the areas in which we are covering within this exhibit. So uh, there's more coming up. Uh, we're actually covering childhood in colonial America. Uh, and that's gonna be February 3rd. Uh, it had to be canceled in January because they had an emergency. Uh, and uh, we're moving ahead in uh, Black History Month. We're going to be partnering with Historic Row Aiton and having a uh, virtual lecture uh, given by the Connecticut Historical um, Society called Beyond the Amistad. And then in March, we're going to uh, be partnering with the League of Women's Voters and having a presentation from the Connecticut Women's Hall of Fame, uh, Powerful Voices, Connecticut, um, in democracy. So, um, you know, we're, we're filling the calendar and, um, and we're really excited. And uh, we actually had our first uh, second grade class before we had to do lockdown in, um, in December, come and visit with the new exhibit. Um, and they're very, they were very excited. They've got to play uh, a Native American game called Hubbub. And uh, that went over real well, but uh, the, the exhibit really works for any age group as we're finding out. And, you know, it can be kindergarten uh, to adults. Um, so we're, we're quite pleased um, with how it's work, worked out. But I said, if you haven't seen it and you want to uh, take a tour, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to, to do that. Um, any questions? Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Diane. Okay, next up, reports, buildings. Um, not a ton to report. Um, we did receive the bids uh, for the kitchen, uh, installing the kitchen at the museum. Uh, there were three bidders. Um, one I think was about 47,000, another one was 50,000, and one was 137,000, um, which I think they're all fairly insane for the tiny kitchen that it is and the work that needs to be done, but uh, we're, we're gonna uh, review those uh, carefully in the next couple of weeks with the, uh, with the architect. Um, the um, um, building was that's pretty much the building was that's all that's going on the the project at Mill Hill the the exterior ADA access and the ramp that connects uh, the upper part and the lower part of Mill Hill that is actually under construction and they are actually working on it and say they're going to get it done through that throughout the winter so uh, all the materials are on site finally the steps and things like that and those have all been approved so it's just working out the grading and uh, getting things positioned the way we want it. So, uh, so I'm happy that project is finally moving forward. Um, and it's been like five years uh, to get this one done. Um, that's pretty much it on buildings. Um, you have got some RFPs to write for painting and painting and stuff like that. So uh, I can't think of anything else earth shattering. Okay. Uh, I think you have an announcement about cemeteries. Cemeteries I'm very excited about. Um, you may have seen on Facebook, um, uh, John Harrington uh, found this guy who is just this expert old stone wall rebuilder. And he's done, he did Wave, Wave Any, the walls at Wave Any Park and a bunch of other towns. Uh, really nice local Norwalk guy. And um, he, the, we were having a problem at Kellogg Comstock. The, the, the stone wall had caved in in several places and people were actually going and taking the stones away uh, to use in other projects. People were stealing the stones, literally. And um, so um, we think by having a complete wall, it's pretty noticeable if you're stealing a stone at that point. So uh, uh, 
Uh, this guy gave us a very, very reasonable price. He's doing a wonderful job. He's almost finished, if he didn't finish today, with uh, Kellogg Comstock um, in, in rebuilding that. And it's cool because he, you know, he literally restacks them. It's not mortared in. It's it's the same exact technique as they used originally. And it looks like you won't notice a new shiny wall there. It just looks right. You know, there's nothing falling in. It just looks like it should be. Uh, so that's really cool. So I'm actually going to have him give us an estimate to um, uh, rebuild the back wall at Pine Island, uh, the one that faces Matthews Park, uh, because it's in terrible, terrible shape, uh, and uh, see if we can't uh, can't get that done. And it's uh, it's exciting to actually get things done during winter. Um, but especially, you know, he's willing to give us a good price because you know it's the middle of winter, it's downtime, people don't want to do work. Uh, so. Uh, you know, I've learned when we find somebody like this, let's use them as much and as fast as we can because they'll go on to other projects or disappear, and the prices will go up. So, um, so uh, we're proceeding ahead on that. Um, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, great. There was uh, there was one big tombstone that was knocked over uh, mm -hmm. in Pine Island, probably by the mowers accidentally. I don't know, but uh, can use. I just fixed it uh, uh, yesterday and it looks really good. You can't tell it was ever. It cool. was one of those giant ones that sits on the slab and was just falling over. You just have to lift it back and put it on. So that's done. Okay, great. I'll have to thank John for finding that fell, the wall guy. <laughs> yep. And now on to financial. Put on I'm your gonna, other hat. I'm going to say good night. Oh, okay. Okay. Bye. Good night, night everybody. <laughs> good night. So I haven't spent all the money yet, <laughs> but um, I'm working as far as I can on that. Uh, we did. We did put in a, um, basically a flat budget. I think I've told you this already. Um, except for we are actually our budget is going down because we're transferring about $12,000 to facilities management to manage the buildings. Um, uh, but the, so the overall cost of the city is still the same. Uh, the rest of our budget is, is still basically flat. Um, and uh, we've requested, as Patsy mentioned, 600,000 for, uh, I mean, 6 million for the mansion. Uh, we're hoping um, the city is looking at various alternatives uh, that might make sense to fund that. Uh, so uh, we're hoping uh, that we can figure that one out because we're really at a standstill on the mansion and it's real, we just can't move it forward otherwise. Um, and then beyond that, we're asking for $125,000 for the jail uh, to start the interior renovation, uh, $18,000 for Mill Hill just for some exterior painting, uh, and $10,000 for the museum collection and $10,000 for cemetery site work. So without the mansion, six, six million we're basically asking for 153,000, which is our smallest ask in years. But between that and the money we still have left in our budget, we, that's plenty of money to fund the projects um, that we can get, that we can really feasibly handle next year anyway. So I'm, I'm hopeful we'll get the money for the jail as well uh, and the other small amounts. Uh, that's pretty much it. So. Hey, terrific. Um. Next up is old business, but maybe we should set that aside for new business, just because in case Tom shows up. But what do you think, Laura? Should we do um, just switch that out? Should we? Yeah, um, I think so. Tom mentioned that we could go over it without him, but I kind of. Okay like the idea of him being here for it. Um, right. I also heard today at work that um, Bill Ireland might have some additional edit. Uh, he's in charge of buildings, um, might have some additional edits or concerns with it. So I wonder if um, we should hear those before making too much movement on our end. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't know if it could hurt to postpone talking about it today, at least until we hear from Bill and if Tom could be present. Right. Do we need to make some sort of 
um, what's the word for that? Postponement. Um, like official. Do you have an action item on the agenda to approve it? No, um, I guess just, just to talk about, about it. No, so that you don't need to do anything. You just talked about it. Okay. Um, well, maybe let's just switch for Darren since is Darren still here? Probably. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why don't we just switch? Go to number seven right now, new business. <laughs> All right, I think Liz is on too. -E she's the only <laughs> other, she's the only committee member that was with me, so she might want to jump in, I guess. Um, so I've been going through all the different collections that the city has. Um, and I recently did the ceramics and the framed items, and I presented to Liz, Eric, and um, Lisa all the things that didn't have Norwalk provenance or Norwalk significance um, for potential deaccessioning. I think I sent you the total list of items, um, or I at least sent it to the commission. There's quite a few. Um, I've checked all of the files just to corroborate that we don't have any information on them. Um, a lot of the things were donated for inventory when the museum was at at uh, South Norwalk. Um, and these just, it would be amazing to deaccession them and move them out of our collection so that we have room to properly store the collection that is very pertinent to Norwalk's history and development. Um, I don't know what else to say about that, <laughs> but I'm happy to answer any questions people okay. may have. Did I? I didn't see a list, but that doesn't mean I didn't get it. I thought I sent it, but maybe. Liz, you saw, I sent the list to you at least, didn't I? You're on mute. I'm, I'm mute. I thought I had sent it. Yeah, you sent it to, I have it. Okay. It's a pretty long list. Do you want me to find it and send it to Dana? I don't that know how be, that works for record purposes. Well, I, I guess I don't need it right this minute, of course. Okay. okay. Or if yeah, you want to, yeah, send it to Dana. It's an itemized list. Yeah. yeah. If you can't find it, Liz, I can certainly find it after yeah, I get off I'm the call and send it, it on. That's not a problem. Because there were a couple different lists, correct? Okay. There were two. There was the the yeah, pictures, I have paintings, it. frames list, and then there yeah. was the ceramics and lighting list. Do you want me to forward it to Dana? What do you want me to? Oh, I have the ceramics right here. It, there's two tabs. It should be on the same. Okay. Do you want me? Oh, yeah, I see it. If you okay. have it right there, that would be great. Otherwise, I can send it when I get off the meeting. I have it. So do you want me to send it to Dana? Sure. That would be okay. great. Please. Yeah. Yeah, then I could just put it right on eBay. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that in order for the commission to be able to vote to deaccession these, because that's what we're looking to do tonight, though I think that the, the commission needs to see the entire list, be able to look at it and ask questions. They can't just vote on something that they don't know anything about. Right, right. So I think that we need to get the list out, um, let them ask questions and, and then probably vote on it at the next meeting would make okay. the most sense. Um, and I believe as part of that, some of the items we're planning to donate to Rowayton and some of the items donating to the Lockwood Matthews mansions for so, use or not necessarily a collection. Well, some of them. Um, yes. Yeah, so there's a handful of miniatures and dollhouse furniture that does not come from Norwalk and is not pertinent to Norwalk's development or anybody significant within Norwalk. Um, I think there's a total of eight to 10 items um, that Rowayton would like to have for their dollhouse and miniature collection. And then there's a series of um, 
plates and tea sets, tea services that are not complete in and of themselves. Um, some light fixtures and um, sconces, like the glass work for the sconce, not the actual sconce itself, um, that we have offered to Lockwood Matthews should they get sessioned in case they want them for their Victorian tea or if if it's any of their sconces. And I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Dana, I just sent it to you. Okay. It's just that one with the two tabs, correct, Darren? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I tried to put it all in one place. Okay. If you don't get it, let me know. So it, it's it's a lot of items, and I would just want to say thank you to the committee of the commission, Liz, Lisa, and Eric, uh, for doing a great job and uh, making the right decisions and everything. Um, uh, to because it is kind of hard to get rid of stuff. Um, but when you see the amount of stuff we have and you start looking at stuff and saying, well, you know, does this tea set that's pretty that has nothing to do with Norwalk, why do we have it? Why are we storing it? Why are we keeping it? Um, let's, let's move these things on. And then, you know, if you find other items that, you know, are maybe historical that may be more important to some other town, uh, let's give it to them so they can use it, you know, or things like, dollhouse furniture or, you know, Lockwood Matthews Mansion can use the tea sets in their tea. They're not really part of their collection, but something useful, but really, really calling down what we have because we're still going to have more stuff than we can take care of. Uh, but at least the stuff we're keeping has a Norwalk connection to some degree. And that will, as we go through, we'll refine that further and further because we're just getting, this pass is just to get rid of the no brainer obvious there is no kind of connection. It gets harder as we go forward because there's stuff that, well, maybe, maybe not, or it's really expensive, really good, but really not Norwalk. You know, what do we do then? So anyway, all those things we're saving for future years. This pass is, is really to just get the process down, get rid of the obvious stuff. And then the obvious stuff is just really freeing up a ton of room uh, anyway. So uh, so and on the oh that. sorry David <laughs> on the list you'll also see in the notes comment sections um, where I've put what we do know about the items I have checked uh, cross checked many of the items obviously if we have files on them I looked at the files um, I cross checked a lot of the items with Ralph Bloom. Um, and he gave me a lot of background on some of them and you can see in my comments what we do know about them. Um, if they were donated just for shop inventory, if they were collected from somewhere in Bedford, New York, there was quite a few of those things just to round out um, what shelves looked like. Um, some things were compiled just for display purposes. All of that should be in there. Um, but again, once you have time to look through that list, I'm happy to go over it and answer any questions. Is there any thought about donating some of the um, anything related to oystering to the aquarium, maybe? There's nothing that we really came across that was oystering specific. There were some oyster shells that were used in a display in an exhibit, but they are not old shells. They were collected off a beach at the time the exhibit happened. So, I mean, if they want them, they're happy to have them, but I don't think <laughs> I don't think so, they'll really want to collect those. So actually, the, the aquarium isn't a collecting institution in terms of objects, um, and they actually have a collection that they've been working on of actual decent stuff that they have been working on deaccessioning for years. Hmm. Um, oh, so they, they're trying to to move away from that because they're really about the animals and exhibits. They're not about. Uh, is much about objects. When they started out, they originally were, but they found out mm -hmm. that the direction they wanted to go. A lot of this stuff, particularly a lot of the porcelain pieces, when the museum was originally built in 1973, they opened up and it was before Manise Lockwood died. So he didn't want to get, he was living with all of his stuff. He didn't want to give it up till he died. So they had an empty museum building. So they went around and gathered like a lot of pretty stuff so they could have some nice displays. Um, uh, but it wasn't really 
you know, the museum until several years later when he passed away, then, then they finally got the, the more valuable decorative arts and furnishings. Uh, so that's how we ended up with a lot of this stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll take a look at that list. I'm afraid, afraid to do a split screen because I might not be able to get back in. Uh, yeah, so I'll look at that later. Um, if you didn't get it, Dana, let me know. Okay, so, I probably did. I know where you live. No, just kidding. You know where I live, right? Or I, Darren can send it to you, right? No, it was yeah. really, it was a great opportunity and very interesting. So, I mean, just as a commissioner, I thought it was a great experience. Liz, if you could send it to Laura as well, she can send it out to the whole commission. And keep okay. Track of it. I think that'd be- Do you good. have it just, Darren, do you have it? I, Cause I have it as part of a whole long email. Do you I have can to, send it, I'll send it right now. That'd be great. To uh, Laura, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. What L Kenny at Norwalk CT. Yeah, great. And yeah, copy Dana too, just in case I sent her that. Sure. That'd be great. And if you need more help, please let me know. Cause I, I, I'm, I definitely will. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> I will. Thank you Good. so much. No, it was, it was really interesting. Well, I'm glad it wasn't painful, which is what I was worried it was going to be. Not at all. Well, there's plenty more to come. I was just worried that you Go guys didn't want to hang on to everything. So. <laughs> no, no. Oh, we were. I'm sorry. Around. There are, there are four tabs to this. There's a little bit of furniture, paintings, hazardous materials, and ceramics. So there's four different parts to this. Mm. And I just sent it to Laura and Dana. Great. Great. And the hazardous materials, the one thing I will say about that is most of them do not have Norwalk significance. Um, but even if they did, there's problems with trying to salvage the containers because of corruption over over a hundred years worth of time <laughs> passing. And just in general, you know, contents are not, there's a bottle of kerosene, for example, from 1912. I don't really want to touch that. Oh, I've been wanting one of those. <laughs> we also you have a beaker that says, that says mercury. So you can, you can oh. have that one too. No, that, wait, no, I have enough of that. Oh, okay. Well then never yeah. mind. <laughs> okay. So that's Darren's printed. I think you're all set then. I think so, unless anybody has any questions. Yeah, questions? Well, I, I may have some after I see the list, but yeah. not, not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Darren. Um, well, let's get back to, since Todd is here, uh, let's get back to the demolition delay proposed amendments just to look over. We are have all have a chance to look this over. It, yeah, did everybody get it? From Tom. I sent it out as an attachment to the agenda. So if you received the agenda, um yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Well, my general take on it is that he did a really great job. I only have really two issues. Uh one is you, that tiny questions. Um which may be Todd, I mean, Tom, Todd, Tom, for um, page two, 55.5 um, A, it says uh, the age of the building or structure to be demolished. I think it should probably say the year built of the building, even Where if it's circa. Um, just to make it a little more. Oh, 55 A. That's the word I want. 55 A. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Year built makes more sense than age. I think. Yeah, I agree. Todd, you had a little, oh, also I was wondering about, um, 
Of the age, okay. Same page. Within 10 days following the initial submission of an application for a permit to demolish a building or structure, the applicant shall. I'm wondering if at this point, is the clock already running? But maybe that doesn't no, matter until running. we. It's not running until they until they publish it. Publish a. Um, right. Within 10 days. So it's five days before it's published, and then we have two. Um, if we don't care, what? Why don't we? Got to get out more. Um, whether we object to a building being demolished. I guess that's when the clock starts. After the, Is that it, Todd? I, How do you? I think it's after, after it's published. Did I, I oh, think. Come on. I mean, you know, well, what does it say? What? Within 14 days following the initial submission. Okay, I missed a few words. Uh, everything certified, blah, blah, blah. In the event of a written acknowledged objection within, wait a minute, I have to get it over here. It's just not working because I want it to. Okay. Uh, in the event that a written acknowledged objection stating the reasons for opposing dem demolition is filed with the chief building official within 21 days after filing. Now, what, you know, what, what's the definition of filing? I guess that means, wait, should it mean that, should it mean that we have 21 days to file an objection? Yeah. So maybe that needs to be. That's included in 180. I'm just wondering about that sentence. Does it make but they're always looking for little loopholes here, right? They, yeah, knock downers. Um, one hundred and twenty days, one hundred and eighty days from the deemed file date. Now let's see what that means. Hmm. Again, I guess these are something, these are things that Tom can answer. Do you think it's helpful to hold off on this until we have Yeah, Tom? I just, I think we should wait for Tom. Um, but anyway, those are just some thoughts I had. I know you had a thought and Yeah, I was also wondering about something at the top, 55-1, last sentence, um, considering putting forth appropriate development alternatives to demolition, including attempts to find a purchaser who will retain or remove such, I think, do they, does that mean move the building? Because remove sounds like salvaging stuff yeah. until it's the point of no return. We've seen that before. Well, it's they're trying, I think, I think what he means is move um, it. And I think that should be taken out of there because no one ever am I lost? It's too expensive. Can you hear me? Can I hear anyone? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, because I can't hear me. Um, <laughs> hello. I'm agreeing with you that, uh, okay. yeah. that should no, go. It's, my, it's time for my $10 speakers to go bye-bye. Um, so remove should probably be changed to move as in moving in a building. Do you not believe in building? I would moving just take it out. Better than I would take those two words out and not replace it. With it. And now I've 
I can't lip read. <laughs> but, you know, that's, a, that, I mean, that's just me. It's not one thing. Okay. I, I mean, you could put, I mean, I suppose you could, you could put in there move, but with, with conditions that, you know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you can, you know, oh, I don't know. It fell off the truck or we just couldn't, we had to, we had to rip everything out in order to get it. To, you know, you know what I mean? Right. If we can think about well, it their way. Yeah, well, usually when someone goes to move a building, they do want to preserve it, so. Yeah, but, it, but I mean, I'm just looking at every possible. Right. Yeah, the building across from City Hall, where they saved, I don't know, part of the. Well, that should never have happened anyway. Yeah. Um, and also what's. Uh, Jordan's pizza that was ridiculous yeah. but that was a long time ago but yeah yeah well if, if Bill Krauss hadn't seen the, the structure as they right. were taking it apart he was <laughs> driving past it and said that's an 18th century building <laughs> yeah and then no one would ever have known went ahead yeah. and did what they wanted anyway but yeah. um, but it was a little bit better than they only wanted to do yeah um so yeah we'll put this up again for next month um well i, I have a i have a, okay. a couple of other comments okay one is yeah. that uh uh in uh definitions they don't include remediation and that's something that people have used many times to uh, weasel out of this. Um, and I, I know he, 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 you know, he, so, or I, I would say that uh, at the end of the sentence, uh, uh, after of any building or structure ra or, or raising of any building or structure or part thereof, including uh, remediation of hazardous materials. Just add that. So it's very specifically stated. And that's in what section? 55.2. OK. Uh. And the other thing that worried me a little bit, and this could be just semantics, uh, he says 55.4. Being about, is at least 50 years old, comma, contained and contain or contain. I, he just has the comma there between 50 years old and contained within a historic district. Um, I would say uh, or contained within a historic district rather than just a comma, because that could be uh, interpreted a couple different ways. I mean, you know, a, a lawyer could look at that and say, well, it's not in a district or individually listed. Right. Other than that. I think, yeah, or a semicolon. I think we've already established that a building 50 years old is already questioned. Right. I mean, yeah. the beauty, the beauty of, of this, the way this was written originally is that it's anything 50 years old or older and anyone can object. Yeah. As opposed to the much more cumbersome versions that I've seen. This is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Despite yeah. the fact that in reality, only the normal preservation trust has ever objected. <laughs> So it's great to have the historical commission involved. Yeah. Um, Laura, you had something marked about, I forget what. Yeah, so um, in speaking with Bill today, he suggested that this concern I may have inaccurately portrayed 
the situation, but um, my concern was just that um, one section, I, I should find it, but basically um, if some, if a building, I just wanna make sure that if a building is enough to code, uh, either Norwalk building code or state building codes, that that doesn't um, exempt it from, uh, from the demolition delay ordinance. That's a really good point. Right. I, I saw in the exemptions, it, it may have read that way. And I just want to um, clarify that just because I know a lot of older buildings wouldn't meet today's uh, building codes, um, right. despite you know, still being something we want to keep around. Well, yeah, I mean, so uh, it's uh, I, I, off the top of my head, the first thing I think of is one old Kings Highway. Right. Which yeah. was, you know, didn't conform to any known code and from anywhere, as far as we can tell. Uh, and, and you know, it, it was still subject to the demo delay and uh, SEPA considerations and all that. But in the end, it didn't, you know, we couldn't save it. But there was, you know, time to give it a shot. Um, yeah, so that was my one thing. I think um, Bill Ireland had some other concerns, but I would want him to um, to share right. them just to make sure we cover them all and cover them accurately. Um, so I think it's good to talk about it at the next meeting also, but I can share these bullets. I've been kind of taking bullets of what everyone said um, with Bill and Tom after this meeting. So um, so they have them too, and we can all kind of work on it between meetings and at the next meeting. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because Bill is gonna have to make this work. So mm -hmm. good to have him on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And <laughs> when you think about um, the definition of demolition, um, if we make it too broad, his office could have just a ton of um, demolition, be it, requesting demolition permits that aren't really demolitions. You know what I mean? I think we right. need right. to think hard about that definition. Right. And yes, yeah, something Lisa Shanahan brought up was calling, saying raising a building, lifting versus raising, since that's mm -hmm. a homonym for stuff we don't like the z version yeah. of raising well, i thought that's what he meant was uh, you know raising as in demolition right so lifting for um flood issues should be yeah, yeah so presumably um houses aren't lifted to be Although I've, I've seen that done too. So, um, yeah, in there. <laughs> Anything you can think of has been, you know, they're out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does specifically, to... and we talked about this, he and I, about, uh, you know, to specifically say that this does not apply to if you're raising the building or lifting the building, let's be honest, let's be clear, if you're lifting the building to, to comply with FEMA regulations. As long as you don't right. mess with it. Well, yeah, one building I saw they had left one one wall up. Although I don't don't think the house was any longer historic, but that sistering business is uh, widely abused here. Yeah, um, exactly. But I yeah, think this is have... this is uh, this is going to be so much better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, well, I have these notes then, and then I can pass them along and we can kind of keep working okay. at it. If anyone right. else um, reads it and has additional comments, I think it could be great to get them um, in writing just so I can keep track of everything and make sure that we, we try to incorporate them. Um, if you could send those to me by email, um, we, can, we can send them over to Tom for consideration too. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yep. Thanks, oh. folks. I have some good news for everyone that's oh. kind of new news and unrelated, but I just found <laughs> out yesterday, so I thought I'd tell everyone. Um, yesterday, we got an email from the Preservation Trust and uh, of Connecticut, uh, Pres Preservation CT, 
about um, funds for historic religious institutions. Oh, so I right. sent it to the historic relig religious institutions in Norwalk and the first congregation on the green is going to apply for the funds. We should Thank tell you. the uh, Methodist church about that also yeah, right. on uh, by the library. Well, they're all over it. I mean, I just got okay. $200,000 from the state and 50,000 from uh, from the uh, redevelopment agency. Great. So they're in pretty good shape at the moment. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> well, are, we, we got I got I worked with I've been working for them for a couple of years. So we got them a grant for uh, uh, they'd already had a structural uh, structural report done. A couple of them actually paid for by redevelopment. And then there was uh, so we, uh, we got them a grant and it was during the period where there were no where there was no match for the grants. Hmm. So we got them a grant for uh, plans and specs for the rehabilitation. So the next step in the state method of, you know, uh, doling out money was this uh, historic restoration fund grant. And we waited, it, it was first, it was $200,000, then it was down to 50, then it was 100. And this took so long, it was back up to 200. <laughs> so it's 200 matching, but they have the match. Good. Cool. And then the redevelopment grant facade rehabilitation facade grant is fifty thousand dollars and that's they're they're now thinking to tie that if somebody's applying for an hrf grant they're tying that to the to the approval of the hrf grant which has been approved it's todd isn't that all for the uh, their office building residence house no they're doing that on their own so what about the because uh, i know when i voted on one of the grants for redevelopment agency and it was for that house it wasn't for the steeple and the main building. I, I, I don't you know. They, I don't think so. Hmm. Unless it was, you know, the last I heard that that one they're doing on their own. There, there's no state or city money in that. I voted on a grant for it. <laughs> I don't know the commission, and there wasn't. I mean, I would have been, on the, on the main, I would've been the, very excited about if they was going to be used to fix the steeple because that's what I'm worried about falling over. Well, right. that's the one. Yeah, it's not going to fall over. It's been it was Dick Bergman braced it up a long time ago. And, uh, and then we have the sexual report on that. I, it looks like it's going to fall they, over. Please <laughs> say a Hail Mary right now, Tom. It's, it's <laughs> <torqued. laughs> I've, I've looked at that over the years and it's actually kind of torqued and twisted. And an, yeah, an but it's, it's uh, I mean, there's various stories about why it's like that. Who knows which one is true, if any. <laughs> Uh, but, but so also, but, Laura, um, I forwarded the uh, email you sent me to St. Paul's of McGreen, and they have inquired directly to the guy at uh, the trust. I, I don't know if they're going over the project or not, but they were very interested in it. The deadline that's is like, great. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I'm it's sure. in a few days, but days, you know, yeah. the more we can get kind of these yeah. private people working on it, yeah. our preservation efforts, I think, can go a little bit further. So, hopefully, right. everyone applies. Yep. Yeah. And David, did you get a, a letter from Rita Nigri? I don't know if say her name, about the grant opportunity. Um, same thing with the uh, oh, comprehensive historic preservation plan. Um, so she sent that to, I guess I need to send that to Laura. Uh, she said it's Todd. Todd may have some thoughts on oh, it. Oh, yeah. I, do, I don't. I mean, if we do a comprehensive preservation plan for the entire city, maybe we could use it for that. That would be the right way to we, do it. Because we, we don't need to do one for the buildings we own because I think we're already right. in pretty good control of that. I, I actually got excited about that for a moment because I wanted to use it on the carriage house. But then I remembered that, oh, yeah, it's not listed on the registry yet. So yeah. can't, we can't use there it. are grants for that. And it, you know we've needed one for a long time. So if you guys want to apply for that, I think that it's a that would be a great uh, thing to do because you know it can it it can bring all of these things the the the, the plan of uh, the current plan of uh, conservation and development is a good start actually, and uh, to have a real preservation plan done by a, a you know qualified firm would be tremendous. I mean that would be that would give us so much 
background and heft in anything that you guys want to do or that we want to do uh, that, that uh, I mean, we've needed it for a long time. Well, let's do it. It's the matching grant up to 20,000. So it'd be a total $40,000 pot. Can you do a comprehensive plan for the entire city for 40,000? I don't know. Because that's, that's what the money would be. And we'd have to find out in our budget where we take that, but we can probably squeeze I don't know. That. We can ask uh, 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 the uh, one of the circuit riders, you know, Brad Scheid or one of those guys. Okay. Uh, what what they're going for? I can call him. I got I got another thing to talk to him anyway about anyway. Call him and let Laura know, and uh, we can uh, you know maybe maybe figure it out. I'm I'm all for about free money. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they've been involved in a couple of these, so they must know what they go for. So. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Dana, um, yeah. just a quick. Uh, bureaucratic or procedural okay. question um if i holly's not in the, her uh term expired correct right and she was vice chair are you volunteering no, no not okay. necessarily <laughs> but i was just uh do we have to like vote on that yes i think i thought about that then forgot about it so um <laughs> i think technically you have to reelect the chair and vice chair every year in january oh, is what okay. you're supposed to do um, hmm. So maybe we want to think about that and put it on the agenda for next month. Right. Good catch. <laughs> um, what am I saying? It escapes me. There was something else on the whole planning front, but I can't remember what it was. Hmm. Yeah, I think we just slid into new business, but that's okay. <laughs> Are you, I sorry, I haven't even looked at the agenda. Are we talking about the uh, the Walkbridge thing tomorrow, the Indian Fort site? That's three to four tomorrow. Um, oh, are we going to talk about that today? I guess we could. I feel like they're just going to tell us stuff at this point. Well, I, don't know. I think that. Dana, I don't know if you've shared the letter you got back from Sharon to the rest of the commission. I don't think I did. So I can also forward that again. Send that to uh, Laura and have her send it out. So the good news is, is that the letter that the commission authorized Dana to send um, to the Federal Transportation Administration, um, 106 person, uh, was responded to. And in general, I was pleased with the response because it was a response and we're just so desperate for anything. Um, but I thought she did a decent job of sort of outlining things. Um, and they're setting up, a, they have a meeting with all the consulting parties tomorrow, which is what is supposed to happen with all this, including the tribes. Are, are you, Todd, you were on this, did you? Yeah, yeah, we, I, we didn't hear a thing. But you're, you're not, you're, you were invited. Did you I didn't see it. Did you, you know, it might have gone to my, uh, you know, with, I'm in between emails and oh, some no. stuff goes to oh. junk and I, you know, so I'm really glad to hear this because so it's I've already forwarded to me and then I'll go look for it in, in deep in I the was, junk. I was surprised because you didn't respond to any of the emails I forwarded to Right, you. if Todd is you still getting still, still stuck in opt online land, that could be what happened. Well, I can, I can still get you know, opt online, but you, if you if you send it to Heritage Research, the, where the one that's really weird is uh, preservation. That's the one I've been sending it to. I mean, that's why yeah, Todd, you don't know what you're not getting is the problem mm -hmm. with opt online. Right, right. right. So Heritage, <laughs> use Heritage Resources because that works. Can you go in and find all these emails? Because you need to see. I can try. It's, but it's very hard to find those emails. <laughs> Well, let me see if I'm yeah. glad you brought it up because I'm completely clueless. Okay. okay, yeah. The one thing that, I mean, so they're having this meeting, they've invited all the tribes and us, all of our organizations. I'm sitting in as the historical society with Diane. Todd has invited uh, Dana to go through where they are and what they can and can't share with us. And I'm like, great, that's all we've ever wanted. Right. You know, I mean, it's like they make us out to be such jerks. 
the one thing that I found odd in the letter is that um, even though it was Dana's letter, she mentioned me by, by name and she said, your recent letter in a previous email between CTDOT and the commission from Mr. Westmoreland, May 11th, 2021, mentioned the desire to obtain photographs of all artifacts and to obtain physical possession of the artifacts. So yes, that's something we've wanted, but in this particular reference, uh, the, my email on May 11th, I was asking, it was an email I sent to the DOT saying, we'd like to get some photographs, some photographs of some of the artifacts to include in our exhibit. And they came back and said, no. So then I went back and I said, well, gee, can we have the photographs that you've already released to the public to through the press for the artifacts? No response. I called the guy twice, left him two voicemails, <laughs> never responded. Um, and then I happened to see Senator Duff and I wasn't even thinking about complaining, but I started talking about it. He said, oh, I'll, I'll ask about it for you. And uh, so he did. Then six weeks go by, I see Bob again. And he said, hey, did you ever get those pictures? And I said, no, nothing. So he called again. So they sent me one image that was so fuzzy and bad we couldn't even use it. It was like insulting. So anyway, so I just, I, I wrote a letter, an email back yesterday and I copied the entire email chain because I clearly state in there that I'm asking for some photographs because we know the artifacts aren't available to us. I mean, it's clear what I'm asking for, not all artifacts. I mean, it just made it sound like we've, we've made this unreasonable ask. And then I looked at Dana's letter again and there's nothing in there about asking for all. So I copied both those as PDFs, Dana's letter and my email, the whole email chain and recounted you know, the unreturned voicemails. And then I copied pretty much the entire planet on it, basically all the people she copied this letter on. So not surprisingly, within an hour, I got a response back from her, um, which also pissed me off uh, because it was, it was, she was, oh, wait, did I not call you back? You know, it was kind of a CYA thing. Who didn't call you back? And I just, I, I just wrote her a long email and I said, look, I don't even care about any of that stuff. This is, we just want to know the information about these people that have been lost. You know, these people have been lost to time. We, we know you know, the archaeologists know who these people were, you know, how they lived, what they did, blah, blah, blah. We want to know that information. We thought that was being worked on. We thought the report was imminent. You know, we were basically lied to for three years. And where is that information and when are we going to get it? I don't care about artifacts or photographs or anything. Just tell us what you've learned so that we can help tell their story and reconstruct it in some way. Um, so she did get that and she responded. She said, well, you, you, you know, we'll, we'll answer those questions tomorrow in the meeting on, mm -hmm. on Thursday. But, you know, I, I, I was really nice. Well, I was sarcastic, but not. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, you know, I said stuff you know, like I, that I, I appreciate, I look to your leadership in keeping us informed in the consultation process ongoing, you know, because I, because what I really wanted to say, because our state people, you know, the SHPO and the DOT don't give a, you know, what about us. Right. So at least you're answering our questions. So thank you and keep it up. Um, so anyway, so this meeting is tomorrow at three. Um, and, you know, we'll see, I, I don't expect anything earth shattering out of, out of it, but maybe hopefully we'll find out when the analysis is going to be complete and hopefully they'll be able to release, at least release some of us to us. And then we have questions we want to ask about, you know, their process and what they're doing with the highly sensitive item they found. Um, and, um, um, I did put that in there though. I did say, I did say, um, and yes, we know what it is. Apparently, everyone <laughs> in Connecticut knew what it was, except for right. living in Norwalk. anyone living in Norwalk. <laughs> so, right. Like the worst kept secret. So anyway, um, so um, it's it's forward progress, and at the end of the day, that's all I care about. I mean, my my blood pressure. I had to stop three times because taking blood pressure <laughs> to the roof. Okay. 
five so, times so, anyway. so can can anybody you know can somebody try to send me that email chain right. to uh to get the link to uh, just to the, the the base email is Todd Bryant twenty three at gmail.com. That works. Who knows what happens in up in the in the depths of optimum? Yeah, I, it's something very screwy with that. Yeah, um, yeah. I get this image of you know three witches in the basement. I don't know. <laughs> no, they would get stuff done if there's three double, witches in the basement. Double, double, double. Yeah. Um, I'm sending it right now, Todd. Um, okay. Todd, T O D B R Y A N T, the number two three at gmail.com. Okay. There's also a meeting next month uh, for, I saw this in the paper, February 23rd or something, for uses of Manresa Island. So I think it has to do with Walk Bridge as well. Um, I have it copied down somewhere, but that is about a month from now, but that's before the next meeting. Um, if that's something we should probably be cross pollinating with. Yeah, I think it's the 23rd. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. So it's three o'clock and then we're at seven o'clock. Um, if I have the right date written down. about using Manresa, which is probably technically a brownfield site, but anyway, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I was a surprise by the, it was like a pretty thorough letter from Sharon Lacombe. Um, yeah, and it's surprising to hear anything at all about Walk Ridge since we've been used to radio silence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every, you know, they were all over, you know, they were all over having us at every step until they got to the critical point of the design of the top of the towers. And after that, you got nothing. It was. <laughs> oh, they were yeah. terrible. And we you know we went to two years of meetings. Yeah. And then, and then the, they, you know, to put on the design, they ignored everything we said. They even asked us what color it should be painted. Then they come back. And they say, here's the design. And, oh, we're painting it gray because that's the only color we can paint it. And basically left the room. I mean, it, it, was, it was, anyway, I have to stop. Yeah, I, oh, I, I, stop. I, I think, the, 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 you know, the concept of being played gets in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we're just marionettes. We're pulling yeah. a straight. <laughs> you like this one, don't you? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. I thought that's, I actually thought that was why you were here. But, um, no, I just, no, I, I was also, here for the demo delay. I just sent uh, you and Laura uh, also the email chain. Uh, so you can see my interaction with Sharon yesterday. And Laura, if you can send that out, all those out to the rest of the commission. And then hopefully we'll have some update tomorrow. Um, but, but to that point, I, I, yeah, I think uh, tomorrow will mostly be telling us what we can't, you know, what the process is and why we can't know anything. But, you know, at least we're there and they're talking to us. It's all we ever but, asked for in the first place. But, but to that point, I, uh, in reading, uh, uh, one, you know, the, the 106, the, you know, microtype and the single space 106, there is a provision in there, if I remember it correctly that says that the, uh, the Secretary of the Interior can almost unilaterally with the tribes restrict any information he wants. Hmm. And, and they may do that, but you know, hopefully they won't. And um, uh, you know, we have just... a NATO, we now now have a Native American Secretary of the Interior. Right. So, depending upon which side he comes down on, we, if it ever gets to, I mean, you know, the ACHP first. I just, I don't know why, I mean, I don't know why they would do that at this particular site versus something else. Well, I mean, I can understand that they don't want a, mar a marker that says dig here, but. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
Well, there's nothing to dig for because the site's been excavated. Well, there is some stuff left, I think. But I mean, in any event, I can understand that. But how do we, you know, what's the middle ground? But that's, and that's a lot different though than, than not telling us, you know, like oh, the yeah. thing we want to know, which were, who were these people? Yeah, yeah, not including us as they're supposed to do. Were they Pequots? Were they Lenape's? I mean, who, who were they? Um, so that's, that's the yeah. main thing. So anyway, all right. Right. Okay, <laughs> never stops. Um, so I think we've covered everything and more for tonight. So who's in that, that, that who would like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do we have to make two motions? Liz Golden? Second. Okay, I hear, I think that's Jordan, I hear. Yeah. Um, okay, so until next time, we're signing off at 817 and see you around town. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Thank you, good Thank night you. everybody. Good night folks, night. thanks. Yep.